Good day, my name is Sky, and I appreciate you spending some study time with me. I'm here to help you make money in online poker by teaching you key strategies and getting you to take action. So today's episode is a little bit of food for thought episode. I'm going to give you a hand example or two really, but the basic concept that I want to cover today is utilizing as much information as possible to make reads on the situation and on what your opponent potentially has, and then making plays to exploit those reads. The main thing we're going to be talking about is poker's ultimate question. What are they doing this with? Go to the show notes page for today and the other micro stakes related podcast episodes that I've done recently at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 453. Let's roll Gambate. Bob, in all my years of calling games, I don't think I've ever been this excited. You're excited? Feel these nipples. So I want you as a micro stakes player or maybe at whatever stake that you play, whether it's online or or live, I want you to put more thought into what your opponents hold and uh, exploit them even better than you ever have before. And I created what I call poker's ultimate question, what are they doing this with? This is the key question at any time in any hand when your opponent makes a play. You ask yourself that question, what are they doing this with? And in order to answer that question fully, uh, you have to utilize as much information as possible. You have to think about the villain's pre-flop range of hands. You have to think about their tendencies, their general tendencies. If you had a HUD, great. V-pit, PFR, C-bet, fold to C-bet, whatever the situation requires, whatever stat that you need. But that HUD can help you understand their tendencies. If you don't have a HUD, or you're playing live, obviously, no HUD there, then you need to be relying on your observations and your memory from all the things that you've seen them do in the past Take that information and use it now to make great reads, to make great exploits by answering that question, what are they doing this with? On top of those things, you want to think about the stack and the pot sizes. That's really important. And just imagine if we just look at two extremes, right? Somebody has a hundred big blind stack. Well, that's your common everyday cash game starting stack. But someone else has a 12 big blind stack. Well, that could be like a tournament bubble situation, right? Blinds and antis are going up. Stack sizes are decreasing. Hit your opponent um, with a 100 big blind stack in a cash game. He's going to play differently than having a 12 big blind stack in a tournament. So stacks and pot sizes absolutely matter. Table position and relative position. Obviously, you play differently on the button than you do under the gun. Most of your opponents do as well. Uh, Some of your opponents, this is a great thing to pick up on, uh, and it's a really good tendency. A lot of players love three-bet bluffing from the small blind. Like if you uh, have uh, a HUD, if you look at their positional three-bet in the small blind, you might see 7, 8, 12%. Whereas that same player in the big blind, because there's a one big blind discount, they actually take the opportunity to call more often. So their three bet in the big blind might only be at one or two percent. You're going to find those kinds of players, right? So table position and their actual position matters. matters. So does relative position. And by relative position, I'm talking about who is in position, flop, turn, and river, and who is out of position on those streets as well. Because players do play differently based on their position. And once again, your HUD is going to help you pick up on their tendencies, but observations help as well. You might be watching players. His name is Bob right across the table in a live game. He never C-bets when he's out of position. Uh, for example, he opens in the hijack, cut off calls, everyone else folds. On the flop, he's always going to check to see what his opponent does. Whereas, flip the script, if he's the C-better in position, maybe he open-raised in the cutoff. The big blind called. Every time he's in that spot, he makes the C-bet. He has a positional or maybe I should say a relative positional tendency that you could potentially exploit. So there are so many important bits of information that you can use to answer the question, what are they doing this with? Remember, poker's ultimate question. I highly recommend right now, whip out um, your poker journal. Of course, take notes, but get a sticky note, you know, like a post-it note. Write down that question. What are they doing this with? Attach it to your monitor. I'm going to give you an action step in a little bit. Actually, no, forget it. I'm going to give you an action step right now. For the rest of this week, I don't care if you play only one session this week or seven sessions once per day over the rest of the week, ask and answer that question as often as possible. Every time your opponent makes a play, they check call your C-bet. 
What are they doing this with? They check raise your C bet. <gasps> what are they doing this with? They called your three bet from out of position. They raise in the cutoff. You three bet on the button. They called. <gasps> what are they doing this with? Ask and answer that question at every opportunity. Train yourself to ask that question. And that's also at the same time going to train you to utilize as much information in the hand as possible to make a read and then to make that exploitative play. So that's your first action step. The next action step is going to revolve the next part. Once you make that read, once you answer the question, what are you going to do next? Right? Like, so let's take that prior example right there. You open raised. I'm sorry, your opponent open raised. You three bet, they called your three bet. You ask yourself, what are they doing this with? Think about their player type, how often they folded the three bets in their past, what their original open raising range is. And maybe you assume, okay, this player, I shouldn't say assume, presume because you're using information to make an educated guess on um, uh, what your opponent potentially holds. Let's imagine you think he could have most middle pairs like pocket sixes and above. He doesn't have jacks or better because you know this player. He would have four bet you with jacks because you're an aggressive three better. So he has sixes up through tens. He also has the best suited broadways right here. He has ace, queen, ace, jack, ace, 10, king, queen, king, jack suited, hands like that. And maybe some of the best offsuit broadways, ace, king off, ace, queen off, ace, jack off, king, queen offsuit as well. You think that he could also call with most other suited aces, ace, deuce through ace, five suited, right? You don't think he would turn those into four bets. Now, now that you have a good idea of his range, the flop hits, he checks to you. It's a seven high flop. Let's assume you have something that did not connect with the board. You didn't flop a set of sevens. You don't have an over pair of aces. You have yourself king, queen, ace, five suited, something that didn't connect with the board. Well, when your opponent checks to you, what should you do at that point? You already made a read on their pre-flop range. Think about that range. All those middle pairs, the best suited broadways, the best offsuit broadways, and suited aces. Seven high board. What should you do? You missed the flop. Yeah, you should see bet bluff. And the big reason for that is most of his range, all those ace X hands, king X, maybe even queen jack suited, if he can call with that, jack 10 suited. Sometimes players call three bets with those. All of those can find a fold on this board. You have position. They're, most of their range missed. It is time for you to exploit that read that you made earlier and make that C-bet bluff. If you fail to C-bet bluff on that seven high board, when an opponent calls your three bet with a narrow broadway and ace heavy range, and there's no ace nor broadway cards on the board, you screwed up by not making the C-bet right there. Now, you might be saying, Sky, seven high board, he has pocket nines in his range. You're right. Better than that seven, he has pocket eights, nines, and tens in his range. But that's only th uh, six combos each. Of those three hands, that's 18 combos, right? Let's just think about one other combo. Ace-queen off and ace-queen suited. He has 16 combos of those. So just that one hand, ace-queen, are almost the equal number of those three over pairs he could have. You made a read. Most of his range missed. You have to be making the exploitative play. And so that's your second action for today. Once you ask and answer that question and you make a read on their range, action number two is to take action on it. Make the exploitative play. Make them fold if you want them to fold. If you think their range hit the flop squarely and you flopped a set of sevens yourself, hey, go ahead and bet big to get value out of the opponent when you think he has a strong enough hand to call. So that's, like I said, action number two is to, once you make that read, you have to do something with it. I mean, it helps just the fact that you're making the read, but the whole purpose behind playing poker and thinking about your opponent, taking all the information into account, is so that you can do something with that information. If you fail to make the exploitative plays, you're wasting your potential in that hand. You're not making the profits that you could. You're not earning the quick and easy pot that you could. You're not um, uh, maybe frustrating your opponent and leading them down the road of tilt in the future. Whatever could, whatever good could happen in your poker session, you're not allowing or you're not helping it to happen when you're not exploiting your reads. So you have your two action steps and I already told you about the sticky note, but I want to make it as clear as possible. This is your mission this next week. Three-part mission. Part one, 
Write poker's ultimate question on a sticky note. What are they doing this with? Part 2. Ask and answer that question after every play your opponent makes. Use as much information as possible to help you develop a read on the strength of their hand. And part three to your mission, exploit that read that you made. And I wish you all the luck in the world building your bankroll in the microstakes so you can move up and move on to bigger and better things. 